Our jury's out. You're welcome to go ahead and be seated. Um, the case that was cited by standby counsel, which is McCaskill, M-C-K-A-S-K-L-E versus Wiggins, W-I-G-G-I-N-S, that is a U.S. Supreme Court case, uh, 104 Supreme Court 944 1984 case, um, was, I believe, presented to me in support of the contention that whatever conversation we have to have about this issue should be done on an ex parte basis. And I don't see that in this case. Was I mistaken? Yes, Your Honor. That was in response uh, to Mr. Um, Porter's uh, assertion that uh, defense counsel cannot come forward and request the ex parte hearing. So McCaskill stands for the position that standby counsel cannot be totally silent, but we can't file motions related to suppressing evidence or make objections or do anything in the presence of the jury that interferes with her right and her ability to put her whole case, her own case forward. The request for the ex parte hearing is something that Ms. Moss agrees to. And the purpose of the hearing is so the court can hear from Ms. Moss. Okay. Well, Ms. Moss, stand up and tell me what it is that you want to address on an ex parte basis. You don't have to give away whatever it is that might be a strategic issue, but generally speaking, what do you think needs to be discussed outside the topic of, this, of the state or outside the presence of the state? But in your, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but because she has a right for the state not to hear something, if she unintentionally divulges something to the court for strategy, for example, she's now divulged it to the state. I think you can ask her that question and she can respond, and the court can decide whether ex parte is necessary, but to place her in a position where she says that in front of the state and she potentially divulges something that she doesn't have to, I think, is improper. Well, and I'm just bringing it to the court's attention as standby counsel. Oh, Your Honor, that's not an objection? Yeah. Uh, I, I understand, sir. I want to hear from Ms. Moss. Okay. Okay. Ms. Moss, you don't have to reveal anything that is the secret, but just waving the word ex parte around by itself isn't enough to have me exclude the state from a conversation. So give me some sort of hint about what it is that you think we need to discuss without them being present. Just, um, some certain situations, I guess, as far as, uh, um, going forward from this point. Yeah. Um, in terms of representation, or um, is there something you need from the court that you don't have? It would be something that I would need later, um, and we're bringing it up now. Okay. Um, can you tell me anything else without sort of letting the cat out of the bag? <laughs> um, not really, Your um, Honor. Yeah, perhaps the court would hear from standby counsel and, and make a decision about it. Hear from you on an ex parte basis? Well, Your Honor, the court is in the position to know whether it is proper or not. That's the whole point. It's, so, for example, under the Putnell decision and the uh, procedure that they put forward, defense counsel makes the request, and we're not talking about standby, defense counsel makes the request to the court. The court looks at the request, determines whether it is appropriate or not, and then rules as to whether ex parte <coughs> is necessary. In Putnell, the court decided that I'm going to give this over to the state so that they can see. And that was the improper thing, and that got the whole thing reversed. Because the court didn't make the determination. The court is in the position of making the determination whether it is appropriate or not, not the state. And placing the defendant in the position of divulging what is trying to get the court's attention in front of the state before the court makes the decision as to whether it is appropriate or not 
It's clearly improper under Putnam. Right. I'm not asking her to divulge anything. In fact, I said just the opposite. She did the best that she could, right. Your Honor, and you asked her for more information. The, and, I, and I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, I understand the court's position is to make this ruling. I am just trying to point to the court to a potential error that it's making in drawing this out in public. And the court can ask specific questions in private and then deny or grant. And Putnam said, you do an order, you seal it, place it in the file if you're going to deny it. You don't do that in public. Hmm. All right. Because it destroys the adversarial nature of the proceedings. Any further comment from the state one way or the other? I, th I think I think at this point it's incumbent either upon the on count on standby counsel or the defendant herself to give the uh, the court some idea of what they propose. The state would be willing to have that delivered to the court for an in camera inspection and a determination. I mean, using Mr. Gardner's word, the court is to consider the the request. I, I can I can think of several scenarios of what this request is going to be. And again, as I said yesterday, there has been no request along the lines of representation. But the state would not object to the court in camera inspect, uh, inspecting and making a decision on whatever the heck they're requesting. But if the court determines that it's not appropriate for an ex parte hearing, the state would insist on being at any hearing regarding the matter of that request, particularly since it's sight unseen. Can you put something in writing that I can look at on an ex parte basis or an in-camera basis that gives me an idea of what it is that you want to discuss with me? Sure. Um, so I'm sorry. Were you talking to me, Your Honor? I think it. I'm talking to the, Ms. Moss. Yeah, your standby counsel, Ms. Moss. Yes, sir. All right. Prepare that over the lunch recess. Thank you. We'll be in recess until one o'clock. <laughs>